today on the Chop Shop, we're going to be looking at Raphael Stone tenure as the GM at the Rockets and his failure to launch and light the fuse. We're going to start it off with James Harden trade. Let's just see a James Harden himself. You know, we're not even close, honestly. We're just not good enough. Um, you know, we just, we don't, we don't, uh, obviously chemistry, talent-wise, just everything. And it was clear, um, like I said, these last few games. I love this city. Um, I literally, you know, have done everything that I can. Um, you know, I mean, this situation is, is, is crazy. You know, it's something that uh, I don't think can be fixed. Perfect. James Harden pretty much pouted his way out of Houston and eventually was traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Raphael Stone could have traded him sooner, but he was holding out hope that James Harden would change his mind. So in the James Harden trade, we received four first round pick swaps, four first round unprotected picks, Rudy Caruso and Victor Oladipo while electing Jared Allen and Karis LeVert to go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That trade is still on pack watch. Then it was time for Russell Westbrook to go. After his dismal bubble performance and he traded him to the Washington Wizards for John Wall, which pretty much backed him into the corner because it was the only trade available at the time. They both was making substantial amount of money, $40 million plus. That gave way to the wild wow factor. John Wall, Victor Oladipo, and Christian Wood. And as I can say, that wasn't a pleasant experience either. He then traded for Kevin Porter Jr. The left-handed Steph Back King had shades of James Harden game. And once he got to the Houston Rockets, they switched him to the point guard. He spent a couple of games down in the G League getting his game together. He came back and posted one of his best games as a pro against the Bucks, 50 points and 11 assists. Then Stone realized that the trade for Victor Oladipo was trash and he was washed. He traded him to the Miami Heat for Kelly Olenek and Avery Bradley and a pick swap from Miami in the 2022 draft, which I could say Stone always tries to fix his mess ups. The Houston Rockets with the league worst record at 17 and 55. With the second pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Houston Rockets select Jalen Green from Merced, California. Yes, Lord. And the NBA yes, G League yeah, With the number two pick in the 2021 draft, the Houston Rockets selected Jalen Green from the G League Ignite. He was a primary score option that looked like he had superstar potential. They also traded Oklahoma City for the number 16 pick for Aperin Shangun, the Turkish League MVP. Al P, which was a stat stuffer and an analytical darling, came to the Rockets and quickly became one of the most controversial Rockets there is. They finished that draft off with Josh Christopher, Jacob, and Usman Garuba, Uzi. The big free agent acquisition that year was Daniel Tice, which gave way to the double big lineup. As we all know, the double big lineup was not successful at all, contributing to Steven Silas looking real dismal at a post-game press conference, looking like he really wanted to cry after losing 15 games straight that prompted a change in the starting lineup. Perfect. Stone then traded P.J. Tucker to the Milwaukee Bucks for a first-round pick in D.J. Augustine. He then traded Daniel Tice to the Boston Celtics for Dennis Schroeder. The wild factor trading PJ Tucker, trading Daniel Tice was all moves that Stone had to do because it really wasn't a good look for the Houston Rockets. That Houston Rockets team finished with the league worst record once again at 20 and 62. Then it was time to draft once more. With the third overall pick in the 2022 draft, Stone selected Jabari Smith Jr. He then selected Tari Eason and Ty Ty Washington to cap off that 2022 draft. He then traded Eric Gordon midway 
through the season at the trade deadline to the Clippers. Eric Gordon pretty much looked like he had enough of the Houston Rockets and this whole rebuild. He just checked out, man. Eric Gordon was not feeling this any longer. Now, let's look at Raphael's missteps. Raphael Stone's first misstep was not retaining Jared Allen in the Harden trade and sending him to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He then, this is controversial, but I don't agree with it. He did not draft Evan Mobley in the draft and selected Jalen Green. His third misstep was not letting John Wall play. He sidelined John Wall for the entire 2021 season while still paying him an enormous amount of money with $40 million, which prompted John Wall to go on the podcast and just let out all the Rockets' dirty laundry. And he really took us behind the scene of this whole thing. Basically, he was on board with playing. Raphael Stone didn't want him to. Steven Silas kind of had his back. But it is what it is. They was trying to tank, and John Wall just wanted out. His fourth misstep was multiple questionable decisions with the Victor Oladipo trade, letting Kelly Olenek walk for nothing in free agency, drafting Josh Christopher and Uzi when there was clear, clearly better prospects still left on the board. His fifth misstep was overvaluing Gordon's leadership. Eric Gordon was supposed to be traded much, much sooner, but he valued his leadership until he we seen this incident right here. One of the guys that's been through it, and that's J.R. Smith. He changed. My first 10 years, I was playing damn near meaningless basketball. Up until, I think in 2009, we, we took uh, the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals. And other than that, we get to the Knicks, we have the one good run. So for my, like the first better half of my career, it was just like, oh, okay, well, we're gonna get blown out. So let me just do what I do to make sure I stand out in, in a sense, you know? So for by the time I got to Cleveland, it was like, oh no, you know, I'm not showing up at 10 and practice at 11. I'm here at eight, getting treatment, I'm lifting, I'm eating, like I'm watching Braun. I'm like, oh no, 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 this is what, this is how we win. Perfect. So my mentality completely changed. So it was like, my accountability on even some of the things like not feeling like I had a fair shake like accountability like I added a lot of that to the situation to where it kind of weeded me out so like that's why I fear for you know, like the young players and talking about bringing the age group back down it's, it's it's hard because I was that high school kid who was that 17 18 years old go to a really bad team not really that good with vets like, don't really like young players. So I'm 17, 18 years old. I'm around 35, 36 year old dudes looking at me like, what am I doing there anyway? Is that the best situation for me? Probably not. When I got to Cleveland, like that was the first time I seen the whole team in the weight room and uh, on the court. Like we were doing individual workouts together. Like it was, it, it was something that I've never seen before. Like literally, and I, I catered a lot of that to Braun because his his work ethic and his drive is ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you're the 15th man on the team or the second man on the team. He'll go work out with you. He's going to get shots up with you. He's going to talk to you, communicate with you, like what's going on, blah, 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 what do you see, whatever. And for me, once I really got around that winning mindset, like, no, this is our expectations. We expect to win. Not like, oh, we just going to get there and then see what happens. Like, no, we, we expect to win. Talking about right there. This is the biggest fundamental thing and aspect that Raphael Stone has missed out in this whole rebuild. This is why I give him a failure as the GM so far for the Houston Rockets because he totally is one-sided on losing, 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 and breaking these guys' mentality that he already have on the team, and that is not how it's done. You heard it from J.R. Smith himself. Once a loser, always a loser. You always get that in your mind that if we're going to go out here and get blown out, I'm going to play selfish basketball. And we've seen that night in and night out for the majority of two seasons with the Houston Rockets. They have no culture. And if you go back and if you look at this interview with Stone and his answer about culture, he really feels like we have a good culture here. 
that means he is off point he is missing the boat he do not understand or he is just being lawyer right now failing to see that we really have a culture problem here he deflected he pointed fingers at other uh the previous regime he did not take accountability and what we're gonna do if the gm won't take accountability for his own actions this is the number one reason why i give rafael stone an f for failing this organization because he is ruining the reputation the mindset the guys that he have on the roster right now he's too one-sided he's just thinking about draft picks draft picks draft picks and tanking and i don't think he really understands what he is doing to the guys like Jabari Smith and Jalen Green, Tata, Usman Garuba, even KPJ at that point to where he didn't give these guys vets. He didn't establish a culture to where these guys can thrive at. And from my understanding, if I was Tillman Fertitta, Raphael Stone will be on the hot seat coming this season depending on what he does for the 2023 offseason. Raphael Stone is officially on the clock. Thank everyone for joining the Chop Shop. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment in the bottom. Let me know how you feel about this video. Let's go, Houston Rocket. Perfect.